And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 for Wednesday, September 20th, 2023. I am re-recording this video. And I apologize because I received a phone call, thought I had paused the video, which would also pause the, the recording, but it didn't. So those of you that have already listened to this, you now caught a bit of a private conversation between me and my spouse. So I apologize for that. Let me start over. This is the Elliott Wave update for Wednesday, September the 20th. It was an interesting day. It was a quick day. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time like I did before. Let's jump right in. I'm going to start here with the S&P 500. I had left it yesterday that we we were still going to be within a wave two, and that was a, min, a minute, a min, excuse me, minuet wave two. And we ran the possibility that we in the S&P get above 4,500. We can get up as high as 45. I believe it was 48 or right 30, somewhere in there. We got up to 4,508. And then the market started to turn lower. The Fed, the Fed came out. They they did pause. They did not. They left rates unchanged. But during the press conference, it was uh, taken as that Chairman Powell was rather hawkish rather than dovish and still had his concerns in, about certain things coming up in the future. So the market began to sell off. Now, again, when I'm describing Elliott Wave and I'm telling you what I'm looking for within a third wave, uh, and I will just interject here that within Elliott, when you're studying Elliott, Elliott does not pretend to know anything about fundamentals or what's going to cause a particular move. We just see it within the wave count. We see it and how we're counting what we see in front of us. And so I will talk about where we're in a third wave that I'm looking for very strong downside. And when we get inside the third of the third wave, it should be pretty strong to the downside. And we're going to see where the market will just start to break without pausing, starting breaking below resistance, break, excuse me, breaking below support and just not looking back. And that's what we got this afternoon. Now, hopefully what I'm going to be talking about here, it's like, this is what I'm talking about. We drop into the three of the three of the three. It's going to be that strongest, deepest, part and actually it's still in progress so let's go over the fibs that i've now added <clears throat> to the picture so we have let me just go quickly out to the to the four hour chart so that we can see this all in progress as it's happening we have minor one minor two we have minute one, minute two. Then we have minuet one, minuet two. So we have the nesting twos. So what that does tell us is that we have a series of three, four, five, four, five, four, five to complete this entire sequence. So again, minor one, minor two, minute two, minute, minute one, minute two, minuet one, minuet two, we're in minuet three, we get a minuet four, we get a minuet five, that'll complete the minute three, we get a minute four, a minute five, that completes the minor third, we get a minor four, a minor five, and that completes the intermediate wave one. So we've got some downside. What I've now added <clears throat> are the various levels for these third waves. The minor third wave, again, just sticking here to the four hour chart for a minute so you can see the depth that we're gonna likely get to. We ought that we have that minor third wave. It's gonna equal, minor number three would equal minor wave one at 43.1375. But as I know from doing Elliott, third waves are most often the longest and the strongest of the waves of the one, three, and five. That the rule is it cannot be the shortest. So I'm always going to be looking for a little bit more than 100% when comparing it to wave one. That usually brings me out to the 1.618, which in this case brings us down to 4137. But here we have 100% of 4313 that is going to be a support level. But now I'm going to add my next layer. Where I have a minute three. <clears throat> minute three is in action. M minute three is going to be 100% of minute wave one at 4404. Well, that is not actually maybe just going to complete the minuet wave three. So we start breaking it back down and come back down into the hourly chart so we can see what we're doing. This 
minute. That's all these calculations here. Is likely, the minute three is likely going to come down to 1.618, where minute three is going to equal 1.618 to minute wave two. Oh, excuse me, minute wave one. That is a very common. First up is, is equality. Second up is 1.618. And because the third waves are the longest and the strongest, 1.618 is more often. So that is 4382. Now I'm going down to the next level. We have minuet. We're in the minuet third wave. Minuet three would be equal to minuet one at 4404. I'm kind of looking for a little bit more here. I want it to be the longest out of the sequence. And that sequence would be this one. So I'm going to be looking for it to drop below 4404. Well, next up would be 4382. So that fits. So maybe we fit minuet three there, and then we get a four and a five, and the five brings us down a little bit below here, and that then finishes minute three. All right? Minuet three finishes somewhere in here. We get a minuet four and a five, and then we still finish here, or possibly... 4340 is where the minuet sequence will finish up. And then that finishes the minute third. Now we're back out to the minor third. We're finishing minute three. We still got a four and a five. What's that going to tell us about the minor level? Well, here we have some additional levels. Minute three could be 2.618 of minute wave one down to 42.68. We know that minor three would be equal to minor one at 4313, but it may come down to here. And then again, we have additional down here. Minor three would 1.618, which is more common at 4137, 4138. So I'm looking for ultimately, more than likely, minor wave three to finish up around 4138. My I minuet mean, wave three to finish up somewhere around 4268. Minute wave three to also finish somewhere around 4268 down to 4236. And then we get the four and the five and we get this all in. So that's how I build it and this is how I use it. And I wanted to go over that. These get refined as these moves continue to play out. OK, as these continue to play out, we continue to add additional fibs. So as we're moving down, we add fibs that gives us it fills in a lot of blanks to where all of these things will end up. But this is how I build my picture. And again, I am telling you straight out, I don't go on the who, what, where, when or how is the market going to get here. Elliott Wave doesn't know anything about that. I use that in my own trading, of course. I'm paying attention to what's happening in individual stocks. I pay attention to we got earnings reports. I pay attention that we had a Fed today. But in all honesty, a Fed pause, even though that's what the market was expecting. Why? Because we had a lot of Fed governors going on saying, oh, yeah, we're probably going to pause. We're probably going to pause. We're probably going to pause. Eventually, you've got CNBC tooting that to the world. No way, no how, not going to happen. They're going to pause today. We will not see them raise the rates today. You would anticipate that the market should go up, would you not? And they tried. But what came out after was additional information. It's like, well, you didn't do it now. Doesn't mean you're not going to do it next meeting. You're already letting us know. You're revising what your interest rate schedule was for 2023. You've already done it once. Now you're doing it again. So this, what everybody wants to hang their hat on, well, this is what Jerome Powell and the governor said coming into the year versus what they're doing right now. And October, that's why we hit that low. In October of 2022, that's why we jammed the market and went up in a primary B wave. A lot of it was because interest rates are done. They're all done. Everything's done. We're just going to go. It gets taken out of context and we get this upside momentum, but that fit perfectly to the wave count that was in progress and to the characteristics of the wave that was working. No idea what was gonna cause it. No idea what would just string it 
to its ultimate finish. Same thing now. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. It's going to break down. It's going to continue to break down. Everyone wants to tell me that it's something else. And those are alternate views. Sure. Love it. But it's playing out according to really what Elliot tells us to look for within these types of moves. Now, going quickly over the moving averages, I want to bring it back up to the daily so we can take a look at this moving average here. And what we got going on is that the 50 got broken, went up, touched it again today, went up, touched it, failed, broke, and then really broke. Once things got cooking, it really broke. Negative, negative. So we got this negative going on in the S&P on the daily chart. It's got its work cut out for it. Now, on a moving average basis, what are you looking for? Next up which sits right at FIB support, 43.40. That's where the, the daily 200 EMA sits. Now, the daily 200 SMA sits below 43.03. Both are support levels. Both are within range of where we're thinking these, two, these third waves are going to finish up. Moving averages are telling us that we still have more downside, and it fits with what we're talking about. And if you look at it a different way, when you're using moving averages, what happens at least on a daily when it breaks significantly below a, a longer standing, a 50? You go to the 200. All right, so leaving that there, let's go over to the NASDAQ, take a look there. Um, and we're gonna start with the moving averages here as well. We got up to it, we popped a little bit above it, but it failed and then when it did, and then when it kicked in stronger, it just went, bringing it back down to that hourly chart. You're going to see how it just went. This was the initial reaction. This is where we started from. Came down, then we bought it back up. Oh, it's it's a pause. It's a pause. It's good. That's good. That's good. And then what happened? And then we got the press conference. Bang, 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 bang. All the way through support, all the way down. Okay. So I'm going to bring this back in. And oh, I'm not sure what happened to all my fibs here, but they seem to be gone on my NASDAQ. All right, I'll just rebuild them. Okay, so using that. So we have, let's put up our minute. And now we're going to do one more. Same level. One to the two. And now we have the minuet. So here we have them all. Now we're working in the minuet. If anything, one, two, three, I could throw another one up there. In fact, I will just to show you how you can keep building FIB levels to where we think these markets can come in, right? So we're looking like we should be 115,124. Well, we're already sinking. We're already at 128. We've already kind of gotten below that 124. And it's kind of maybe, maybe, maybe finishing up, maybe, right? So if we're taking a look at what this third should be, 100%. 100% of wave one is way down here, 14,956. Minuet wave three equals minuet wave one at 14,956. We got more downside. So where can this third end up? One, two, three, it's just not done. We're going to get bounces, but we're going to continue to work our way lower. And this now falls into what I might call a black hole. So we've got some downside exposure here. And again, we'll, I, I will fill more in. So we can do additional that are going to come in and fill these in. 15,050, 15,000. We have them coming off and all the way down. So... I will be filling them in. Now, coming back out to the minute, the minute, just as we talked about in the S&P, what's the limitations? Well, we've already passed 100% where minute three is equal to minute one. We're past that, as it should be. We're also broke below, um, minute three broke below the low of minute wave one, uh, minuet wave one, looking for that. Minute wave three is now broken below, the level of minute wave one. We're looking for that. 
So minor wave three still hasn't broken below the level of minor wave one. And so we're still, that one's still out there, but that's got a lot of work yet to do. So we're looking for three, minuet wave three, getting us down below 15,000. So we should have some pretty more st stronger downside to come in and fill these blanks. Minute, so we can come down, we go back up, we come back down. And let me just open this up. I want to stick a few more in there. This one should be a little bit better. 15,109 would be a good place. And I can put, uh, because it's not, it's, it's not as big, but it is looking like it could be. I'm going to add two more levels down here so we can see them. Because, again, if this was an intermediate degree, third, and we're inside of that, you're, you, these would be gigantic. But here we are. This is a smaller, but it's the three of three. Can the three of three do 3.618 of the one? Sure. So we have 15,109, then we have 15,000. That's what I said before. And then the next one down the line would be 14,935. But I'm looking that the 100%, the 100% should come into play. And that is where Minuet Wave 3, Minuet Wave 1. If I'm looking for a little bit more, so we're looking for the internal, the internal to kind of come in down in here. OK, so again, I know it sounds confusing, but these get worked and then I remove them and then I work them and I remove them as as we need. These are the minute. Minute wave three, 14,903. It's 1.618 of minute wave one. And we're already below. So I like it. We're clean. Now, minor. I don't I think I got to go out. Minor wave one. The low for minor wave one is 14,000. It actually is. Hold on. I got to go it this way. It's 14,798. What do we have? Three. Where's the 100%? Down here. 14,385. Where minor wave three would equal minor wave one. I'm going to be looking for a little bit more. Look what we have. We have the minute down here, 14,186, 2.618. Well, that could be for the third as well, minor. It's a support level coming off, and they all kind of going to fit in to fit and form them one wave. Otherwise, we're looking for a much bigger drop. Again, usually I'm looking for more than 100% because I am looking for these waves you know, what Elliot told us is that the third wave within an impulse, the third wave is most often the longest and the strongest, but what it cannot be is the shortest wave, to, wave out of one, three, and five. So I need it to be at least equal to one, so it's not the shortest. What I'm always going to look for is a little bit more so that if five extends even further, wave one will always be the shortest wave. So it's kind of the way I'm kind of I'm telling the market, please let, let me build this in so that the third wave is going to hold. So again, I am looking for additional downside. It's, it's Well, we got the biggest portion of it underway today. I'm looking for more, and it should continue to pretty much be in this type of format. So this... I don't think we, we're going to get a lot more selling as Asian markets take it in, as the European markets take it in. And then all of those who didn't sell today, maybe overnight are thinking, I got to get out, and they're going to put their orders in. So I think we should get into a bounce, but in this case, it's going to show up as a, as a uh, minuet wave four, and then a minuet wave five, which should be large to complete that minute wave three, and then we get a minute wave four and a minute wave five to complete the minor three. We get a minor four and a minor five to complete the intermediate first. So there's a stair-stepping process in play. And eventually, folks, I'm thinking all these thirds 
are going to end up somewhere down in here. And then we're finishing that third and possibly, possibly we're going to get all the way down and that could be where we get intermediate wave one down in here. Okay. Now this all the way out, those numbers that we just saw, that's primary. That's primary degree. That's going all the way back out to here. And those are the primaries. Okay? They don't even start to show up until down here, primary. So primary wave C, 100% of primary wave A. And you see, we still got, we got quite a bit. But down here, 618. Could be threes. It could be intermediate one, two, intermediate three, or intermediate three ends up closer, you know, down into here. But this is how I build it. I'm not saying that's what it is, but it starts to give us territory. It starts to give us potential of what can happen. So again, we've already looked. We got we've got all the moving averages now showing us that we should continue to follow through to the downside. I already am going to tell you, I do not go to the who, what, where, when, or how the market is going to get down there. I am just looking at the actual formation of the waves and what then Elliot tells me, and then what Fibonacci combining, what levels it gives me. So this is all just a science. It's an art. This is not like, hey, this is exactly what's going to happen. But it's a pretty good methodology, and it's a damn good tool. I'm going to end it there. Again, if you're listening to this on the rebound, uh, thank you. And I apologize uh, for thinking that I had paused both the recording and the video. Obviously, I didn't. Thank you. Have a great day. The next update will be Thursday, September the 21st.